Our journey begins in the turbulent skies of World War II, a conflict that saw dramatic advancements in aerial warfare. At the start of the war, the United States relied heavily on propeller-driven aircraft, such as the P-51 Mustang and F-4U Corsair. These fighters were highly effective for their time, playing crucial roles in both the European and Pacific theatres. However, by the early 1940s, whispers of a new technology were beginning to emerge, one that would revolutionise air combat forever, the jet engine. The jet engine, initially developed by engineers like Sir Frank Whittle in Britain and Hans von Ohain in Germany, promised a dramatic increase in speed and performance over traditional piston engines. While the US was still refining its piston engine aircraft, Germany had already introduced the world's first operational jet fighter, the Messerschmitt ME-262. This aircraft, with its twin jet engines, outpaced all Allied fighters and caused a significant shock to the Allied command. The appearance of the ME-262 spurred the US to accelerate its own jet fighter development. The first American attempt at a jet-powered aircraft was the Bell P-59 Aero Comet. However, the P-59 was more of an experimental platform than a true fighter, its performance was lackluster, it could barely exceed the speeds of the fastest propeller-driven planes and suffered from numerous technical issues. Despite its shortcomings, the P-59 was a crucial learning experience for the US aviation industry. The lessons learned from its development paved the way for more advanced designs, culminating in the Lockheed P-80 Shooting Star. The P-80 was America's first successful jet fighter, entering service just as World War II was coming to a close. Unlike the P-59, the P-80 was designed from the ground up to be a combat aircraft. It featured a more streamlined design, a single jet engine, and innovations like a pressurized cockpit. Although the P-80 arrived too late to see combat in World War II, it marked the beginning of the U.S. transition to jet-powered flight. In the immediate post-war years, the U.S. Air Force began experimenting with various designs, eager to catch up with or surpass the jet technology of its wartime adversaries. The Cold War soon brought new urgency to jet fighter development. As tensions with the Soviet Union escalated, the United States recognized the need for faster, more capable fighters. The Korean War, which broke out in 1950, was the first real test of American jet technology in combat. At the start of the war, the F-80 Shooting Star was the primary jet fighter in the U.S. arsenal. However, it quickly became apparent that the F-80 was not up to the challenge posed by the Soviet-built MiG-15. The MiG-15, with its swept wings and powerful engine, outclassed the F-80 in nearly every aspect – speed, climb rate, and combat ceiling. The United States needed a response, and they needed it fast. Enter the North American F-86 Sabre a revolutionary jet fighter that would go on to dominate the skies over Korea. The F-86 Sabre was a significant leap forward in jet fighter design. It featured swept wings, which reduced drag at high speeds, and a more powerful engine than its predecessors. These design changes allowed the F-86 to achieve higher speeds and better maneuverability, making it a formidable adversary for the MiG-15. In the hands of skilled pilots, the Sabre was able to achieve a kill ratio of about 10 to 1 against the MiG-15, a testament to its capabilities. But the success of the F-86 wasn't just due to its technical specifications. American pilots were also benefiting from better training, tactics, and experience. One such tactic was the boom-and-zoom strategy where pilots would dive on their opponents from a higher altitude, gaining speed, firing a quick burst, and then zooming away before the enemy could react. This tactic exploited the superior speed and dive characteristics of the F-86 and minimized the time spent in the enemy's gunsights. 
The battles fought in the Korean skies were also the beginning of a new era of aerial combat, one defined by jet engines, radar-guided missiles, and high-altitude dogfights. It was a dramatic shift from the close-range, gun-heavy dogfights of World War II. This era saw the introduction of the first air-to-air -air missiles, such as the early versions of the AIM-9 Sidewinder, though these missiles were still in their infancy and had limited success during the Korean War. The Korean War ended in 1953, but it left a lasting impact on fighter jet development. The US had learned that technological superiority was crucial in modern air combat, and this lesson would guide their strategy in the coming decades. As the Cold War heated up, the United States continued to invest heavily in advanced jet technology, setting the stage for the next generation of fighter jets that would dominate the skies in the following decades. By the mid-1950s, the US had firmly entered the jet age, but this was just the beginning. The pursuit of speed, altitude, and maneuverability would lead to even more groundbreaking designs in the years to come. With each new challenge, from supersonic flight to advanced missile technology, the US fighter jet program would continue to push the boundaries of what was possible in aerial combat. The dawn of the jet age was marked by rapid innovation and fierce competition. As the world entered a new era of technological advancement, the US would remain at the forefront, constantly adapting and evolving to meet the challenges of modern warfare. 